Yeah. Hi, I'm Lobster Bob. Welcome to the Lobster Bob Cooking Show. I have a very special episode in store for you today. Now, when I'm out and about, you know what I like to do? I like to eat sandwiches. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, it doesn't matter. There's always room for a sandwich. Now, today we're gonna make a beautiful sandwich. Can you guess what that sandwich is? No, you can't, because you're stupid. I am making a Reuben, but not just any Reuben. I'm gonna put a magical spin on it. I'm gonna be making a tangy apple coleslaw. Now, most people like to put sauerkraut on their Reuben. I'm gonna put the coleslaw on the Reuben. And not only am I going to use some beautiful pastrami, which we're going to heat up in the cast iron skillet, we are also going to heat up some fresh roast beef in the cast iron skillet as well. And melt some nice Swiss on top of that. You know, it's going to be delightful. Um, I'm lactating. Okay, the first part we're gonna do is make our slaw. It's got three main ingredients, cabbage, apples, and carrots, okay? So what we're gonna do first is, we're gonna grate our Granny Smith apples and our carrots. So get yourself a grater, and either get yourself a large carrot or two medium-sized carrots. You're gonna get the side with the big holes, and you're gonna just start grating. Grate that all the way down to nothing. You just take your hand and just go like this. Once your carrots are done, move those to your colander. The next step you're going to want to do are your apples. Do the same thing. Take your cored Granny Smith apple, and peel by the way, and just do the same process. Once your apples are done, Move them to your colander. You're gonna notice it start to get very liquidy. That's okay, because we're gonna get rid of that liquid very soon. So, you wanna get your head of cabbage. And you wanna slice a full head of cabbage. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take our mandolin, and I'm going to put it on, let's try one and see what that does. See what that does. I think that shreds it pretty good. Take the mandolin, take your cabbage, and then go like that. That's a nice consistency. That is really, really beautiful right there. So we're just gonna stick with that, and we're gonna do the whole head just like that. So as it fills up, just move it to your mixing bowl, or, your, or uh, move it to your colander. And just to give the coleslaw a little bit of color, I'm only gonna do a little bit of red cabbage. The recipe doesn't call for red cabbage, but I like red cabbage, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there just for some color. So we're done. We have everything here in our bowl, or in our colander. Okay, I've transferred everything from the colander to a mixing bowl because I wanna take some sugar, about a tablespoon, and I wanna coat that whole mixture of the carrots, and the apples and the cabbage with a little bit of sugar. And then I want to take some kosher salt and sprinkle kosher salt on there. And then I want to give it a toss and let it sit for five minutes. What this does is it purges the cabbage of its moisture, but it still leaves it crispy. So if I could find my tongs, there we go. So, give it a nice toss. Very nice. Oh yeah. Real men use tongs. There we go. Make sure you're gonna get all that sugar and all that salt all down at the bottom. Yeah, if you see any of the cores from the uh, cabbage, just take those out. It happens. Get that red cabbage spread around nice. Use tongs. If you're a man, use your hands. 
if you're a beast. Nothing wrong with using your hands. Oops, making a mess. All right, we'll let that sit for five minutes. Now that the cabbage been sitting for five minutes, you're gonna wanna thoroughly run that through a colander with cold water. All right, so we're gonna do this nice and slow. All right, you're gonna get everything. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. You're gonna wanna rinse off all that salt and sugar. Do this for all of your slaw. Make sure you thoroughly wash out that slaw. I'll know if you didn't. The next step is really, really simple. You're gonna wanna drain out all that excess water. So after your slaw has been sitting in the colander and you've rinsed it off, pop it into a salad spinner. Okay, you're not gonna be able to do all of it unless you have a huge salad spinner. So just move what you can into the salad spinner. Then place your salad spinning lid on top of it and go to town. This is gonna get all the water out. You just do that a couple times, take it. Bar. See the water? Oh yeah. Just dump that down the sink. Shake it up. And do it again. Once you've spun all of your cabbage like a little spider, you're gonna wanna take that cabbage and pour it into your final bowl. And this is going to be my final bowl, my big bowl. This is where I'm going to store all of my slaw. Yay! Our slaw is dried and mixed. Now we gotta make our dressing. Okay, a very important part in making coleslaw. There's all different types of dressings you can make for it, but this is my dressing. So, we're gonna do half a cup of mayo. Then, half a cup of sour cream. Mmm, delightful. Then, we're gonna do a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. Then we're gonna do three tablespoons of sugar. One, two, three. Three tablespoons of honey. We're also going to do one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm going to eye this up myself because I really enjoy pepper. So I'll just get that going. Keep going on that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Half a teaspoon of mustard powder. Then half a teaspoon of poppy seed. Then you're gonna whisk all of that together. And that's it, folks. Take your dressing, pour it over the slaw. Then give it a nice toss. Now, if you want it extra creamy, you could just add more of everything. And then you got an extra creamy coleslaw. This is like a semi-creamy coleslaw because you don't want to make it too creamy when you're putting it on a Reuben. Let's give it a little tasty taste. Oh yeah. The consistency is perfect. <gasps> mm. That's a tangy slaw. <laughs> Folks, once the slaw is done, there really isn't much to it after that, okay? This part is my favorite part. It's a part that touches my soul, my deep, succulent soul. I'm pretty sure my soul is made of beef. Now, I'm going to throw this pastrami on the cast iron skillet, along with this roast beef. Oh! 
See, we're gonna wait for that pan to get nice and hot, and then we're gonna take the meat, we're gonna put it on, and we're gonna make it steamy and steamy, and then we're gonna put it on some rye bread, and then we're gonna put some cheese on it and some Russian dressing, pop it in the toaster oven, and voila, finito. I am so excited! Now that the cast iron skillet is nice and hot, we're gonna add that roast beef. Oh, do you hear that sizzle? Yeah, you do. Oh, God, yes, yes. Now the roast beef is a little dry, so just add a little bit of water to hydrate that bitch. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's get the pastrami going. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Pastrami's nice and moist. It's seasoned to perfection. I only use imported brands or force head. And then we're just gonna cook this until it shrivels up. It gets beautiful on the inside. I love handling meat. Deep, succulent meat. Mmm, Reuben. Ruben, 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 Ruben. Once it gets real hot and browned on all sides and shrivels up almost like you're cooking um, chip steak, that's when you know it's done. So we're going to turn off that pan. And let that sit there for just a second. Now we're going to assemble our sandwiches. Oh god, yes. As you see, it's time to assemble the ultimate dish. Let's add a Russian dressing. Oh God, yes. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a juicy monstrosity of a mess. Just take your bread. Wiggle it around. Get it ready. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that is what I'm talking about. Let's lather on our meat. First the roast beef. Then the pastrami. Is it too much for you now? I don't think so. After the pastrami, let's add our slaw. Oh God, yes. I don't care how messy it is, it is perfect in every way. Then, the final touch, you add your Swiss. And then, you put the other piece of bread back on top, and you press. Now it goes in the toaster oven. Oh God, heaven. We're gonna pop these bad boys right in there. But doesn't that look good? Oh yes. Let's put these on for about five minutes. The finished final product. Look at it. Oh my god, look at it. My name is Lobster Bob, and I just made you, well me, a kick-ass sandwich.